Hello everybody, this is me, MC Gamer, and welcome back to Hyrule Academy on this absolutely wonderful Friday night. I hope you're all doing really wonderful. I'm excellent. Uh, I'm back with you guys after a one week absence. I hope you guys can excuse me. I, I, I always excuse you guys. No tardy slips are ever given out here inside Hyrule Academy, and that's just the way we like it. I'm sure Captain Trina definitely appreciates it inside the chat. <laughs> uh, light jab there. Anyways, the show does air every Friday at 10 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, so I hope you are very excited uh, for, for c c coming back with us next week, even though we're already starting this week. Um, we have a very exciting topic for you today, uh, but first let me recap on what you were just listening to. That was Hyrule King Appears by Zelda Reorchestrated. Zelda Reorchestrated, of course, always on top of things with some wonderful remixes and, and songs that they do. Uh, they, they do like, pretty much exact conversions, reorchestrating them. And of course, their, their site is now shut down, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's okay, because what they brought us while they were still around is absolutely amazing. That's why we still listen to it today, even. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, if you want to give me some quick shout outs inside the chat, uh, my audio might not be perfect. I'm going to be a minute, and for a very good reason, which we'll get to later, I just came back from a very long trip, and my equipment is still being set up as we speak. So uh, let me know inside the channel. I'll fix that up for a bit. But first, let's talk about the King of Red Lions, which is our subject of the week. Uh, first off, a little bit of backstory about the King of Red Lions. Uh, it's, this comes from the Wind Waker. Uh, the, the Wind Waker, of course. Uh, inside uh, the Wind Waker backstory, they tell that the goddesses uh, told the people of Hyrule to take to the mountaintops. They said, go to the mountaintops, my friends. Go to the mountaintops. We're about to flood the world. And so the people did. The king of Hyrule, however, disguised himself and uh, looked to bring uh, back someone to one day awaken Hyrule. And he disguised himself as a boat. A red boat, in fact. A very exciting red boat who would talk to Link throughout his journey. Uh, and Link uh, eventually discovers that the boat is actually the, uh, the king of Hyrule, King Daphne's No Hands in Hyrule. And this is a big epic moment in the game. Yeah, he, he, we re he's revealed to have a, an epic beard. He's revealed to be a very kind gentleman. And, and he, he has a master plan to bring back the ancient land of Hyrule. Unfortunately, in the end, he makes the decision that it's not worth saving Hyrule if it means possibly having a world ruled by evil. And so he, he wishes on the Triforce for hope and, and that, that, that they can find a new land and he, 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 he sets them to go off and he says he scattered the seeds of the future. It's a very epic moment. The game is uh, absolutely wonderful. The Wind Waker is absolutely my favorite game inside the entire Zelda series. I absolutely love everything they did with the game. The characters are some of the best characters inside the entire Zelda series and a lot of people don't realize it because they think it's um, a, very, a very childlike game. They, they think that it's very simple, but it, it, there's a lot to it hidden behind a veil of simplicity. Uh, the, the King the King of the Lions is um, absolutely one of the best characters. And I want you guys to give me guys some opinions on, on uh, some, some of the stuff that the King of the Lions did. For example, we have to nail down some, some facts about him. Like, first off, why did he choose to become a boat? Is it purely for gameplay? Or is it purely for the fact that we need to sail on the water? Or do you think there was something that happened uh, when he was when he was being told by the goddesses that hey, we should probably get to the above waterland? Uh, is, like, is there something behind that? Let me know. Uh, in addition, we also see inside the first time we meet him that he can teleport around Hyrule Castle. What is this magic? Where does it come from? Does he possess sacred power himself? If so, what what, what is going with this? And does this relate to him being a boat? And lastly. And this is the big one. How does he compare to Ganondorf? I want you to discuss these questions and ask your own questions to me over at RadioHyrule.com slash chatroom. I will be featuring the best messages later on inside the show. Um, however, we're going to be taking quite a bit of a break from our, our topic of the week. Because uh, next up, uh, after the short music break, we'll be talking all about my, my latest Zelda marathon, Zeldathon, and get, giving some recap with that. And I have a special guest inside the house with me, and we'll be talking with him all about his experience at Zeldathon. So keep your questions and, and in your answers to those questions coming. I'll be uh, reading the chat and pulling them over for us to talk about later. But for now, it is time for some more music. Keep it locked, Radio Hyrule, and to Hyrule Academy. See you all in just a few. And 
Welcome back, everybody, to Hyrule Academy right here on Radio Hyrule. It is, of course, another Friday night full of discussion about awesome Zelda lore and fan theories. While we listen to some awesome music, I have lots of great music for you tonight, and we've already been listening to some excellent stuff. We have some wonderful tunes that we've been listening to. First up, from Tyler Heath, was Pirates of Dragon Rune Silent. It's a very loved Zelda remix. I decided it would be very fitting tonight for you to talk about some stories from The Wind Waker to throw it into the set list and really have a good time and enjoy it. I really enjoyed it as uh, a lot. It really made me um, really enjoy the the, the 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 feeling of Dragon Rune Sound. That song in particular really exemplifies what makes Dragon Rune Sound so epic. Um, after that, we did listen to Aghanim Arsenic from uh, Arrow Z, and I believe that word is actually in reference to a French rap group. Well, I could be wrong. I actually looked it up, and that, that, that is an actual name of a French rap group. I don't know if that was an intentional thing, but it's in, it is something to be added, added to our knowledge, uh, knowledge banks, to be sure. Anyways, we have a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, we're going to put off our discussions of the King of the Lions just briefly, briefly until our community discussion portion. Keep up your, your comments. I will be reading them here in, in a short bit. But first up, I have back with me, uh, for the second time here on the show, Great Scott LP. Hey, Scott. Hey, how's it going, MC? It's going very well. So, uh, Scott is, is joining me here. Um, and and how, are you, how are you today, Scott? I'm doing very well. Um, I was able to finally get a, a good amount of sleep after Zeldathon. I was very happy with that. Um, and, of course, it's been, it's been great being here with you in the studio. Indeed. So, uh, Scott's with me here physically, inside, inside the physical realm. It's a, <laughs> it, it, it is a wonderful place to be, in fact. I, I really enjoy the physical realm. Um, but we've been, we've been very busy this past week. We've actually done Zeldathon for the, uh, to, to raise money for, our, for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And we raised how much, Scott? We raised over one hundred and one thousand dollars. Exactly, and it's—I'd it, it, like to say we raised it, but it was—it was the viewers, it was the people who helped promote the marathon. They raised the money. We were just there being the kind of the catalyst, I would say. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's it's just such a great feeling to know that uh, this was um, pretty much the most successful Zeldathon that I've ever been a part of, and it was really awesome. Yeah, I was. Uh, we, we we beat every single Zelda game as well, um, for the most part. Yes, uh, kind we, of. <laughs> uh, Adventure of Link had some issues, and we did not finish that on stream. Uh, technically, we played NES Remix Two, in which you actually do defeat the final bosses. Yes, that's correct. So technically, we did defeat Adventure of Link, <laughs> um, and we also uh, had some problem with Faces of Evil, where we actually had a glitch in the game that caused the game to be like not unbeatable, but. It just kind of, I don't know, became very, very, very difficult to finish the game. I, I really appreciate all the effort that Rob put into attempting to beat the game without some of the required items. Like it, it was, it was a valiant effort, but in the end, we we just didn't have enough time to give it a full go. Yeah, for, for to, to tell people what happened, uh, an area in the game became permanently locked, and in that area, you gain an item that allows you to see invisible enemies. It so happens that Ganon's uh, area, the final area of the game, is full of invisible flying enemies, which makes it almost extremely impossible to actually navigate through without dying. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually did get to Ganon, though. We threw the um, the, the wand, or not the wand of him, the, 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 the book, book. The book. The book. We, we threw the book at him. <laughs> and he, he, got, he got locked up inside the book, so we technically, we technically beat Ganon. But we didn't see that in cutscenes, so <laughs> it's okay. The king doesn't need to be saved, or whatever happened in that game. I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> we had a lot of uh, great moments actually happen in this Zelda-thon. Some of them are my favorite things uh, is you actually got a nickname, Scott. Yes, I did. Um, during uh, my run of A Link Between Worlds, one of the donation incentives was uh, if we reached a certain amount within a certain amount of time, that for the rest of the marathon, I would be called Mr. Hero, because that's what Ravio refers to Link as in the game so we did we got it and um i was referred to as mr hero for the remainder of my run and throughout the marathon at various points and i actually went on twitter and changed my uh my name on my handle to mr hero for a short time so that was that was a good moment it, it was very funny because nobody could actually remember to keep calling you mr hero throughout the marathon. <laughs> and everyone in chat was like why are you referring to this guy named scott the only person i know is mr hero yeah, uh, did I say Mr. Ravio? 
I keep thinking I'm saying Mr. Ravio. I, I wore a Ravio cosplay during your run of A Link Between Worlds, and that's where it all started, because the entire time I was referring to him as Mr. Hero, just because I was in character as Ravio, and that, that was a lot of fun. I was like, I was like, Mr. Hero. Like, I remember, because uh, I, I speedrun the game, so I know the game like pretty much in and out. And, like Sometimes you would like, just make one wrong turn, and I'd be like, Mr. Hero, I think the key is... In the other door on the other side of the room. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, that was really fun. It, I, it, was, I hope, it was very enjoyable to I have you in I hope it didn't come out too condescending. Oh, no. It was, <laughs> it was quite enjoyable to have you in character, and it made for some really good voice acting and some good moments during the run. So, Oh, my God. It was the best when uh, we got to Yuga. And, oh, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and for some reason, Yuga says the, the word perfect a few times, and I remember um, Austin Powers. <laughs> uh, what? I know that's a weird transition. But I remember in the, in the movie Austin Powers, I, I forget which one. It is. Uh, there, there, there's a moment where Austin meets some twins. Yes, and, he does. And he says, twins, twins. And and I took that because we, for, for some reason your, your voice was just reminding me of Austin Powers. And when Yuga says, perfect, I went, perfect, perfect. perfect. And, 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 and that was stuck throughout the entire marathon. Every time it was the word great. perfect was mentioned, everybody went crazy. And we, and we did it for other words as well. It, it, was, it was pretty good. With P. Yeah. <laughs> so there were there were a number of things during that run. Like that was probably one of my favorite moments during Zeldathon in general was just my run of A Link Between Worlds. I'd like to think it was entertaining and, and great viewing, um, but that's up to the viewers to decide. Yeah. Um, so something that happened. Uh, so there was a point where uh, we had a donation goal set for our friend Liz to come and I, was she going to sing, I believe? Uh, yes, I, I believe so. Uh, Liz was going to co- come and sing, or she was going to do a Liz Rage slap, something of the, of the sort. And the problem was she was going to be picked up by her friend Jim. And the, the goal was we had to reach a certain amount before Jim got back with Liz from picking her up. And I said, we need to get this off the ground. And a lot of people like inside the Zelda chat were like, okay, it's the hype train. It's the $5 hype train. You throw in $5 to the cause, and you're, you're part of the hype train. And we people, get people in the room go, choo, choo. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's fun, fantastic. But I realized at that point that we were getting like no donations, and this donation wasn't going to happen. So I was like, you know what we're going to do, Scott? We're, we're going we're gonna to supercharge this. We're not going to no $10 or, or $5 hype train. We're doing the $10 hype spaceship. <laughs> and um, so from that moment on, I, I was absolutely bazonkers at the point. But uh, um, every time we got $10 in, everybody in the room went pew, 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 pew like lasers shooting out of the spaceship. And, and then, that, and then of course, Kay took it to the next level, and she would just, like, charge Yeah, she, up. she developed the Kayser. She was like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, it was absolutely crazy. Like we just like developed this weird spaceship thing, and that that alone probably got over one thousand dollars a day. Just, oh, just at people least. wanting the pew pew. No at way. least it was probably more than that in the end. Because the chat just absolutely loved it. I, I I don't know. It was such a silly thing because it just like came out of the top of my head. It was like you know what, trains are stupid. Let's go to space. And then <laughs> uh, and then of course I also started making subway sandwiches for people. Yeah, uh, <laughs> can you explain that a little bit? A little bit more for us. Yes. So um, there were there there throughout the marathon, uh, me and Jaron would try and get small donations hyped up by comparing the sorts of things that you could spend five dollars on, as opposed to funding uh, St. Jude's research into uh, preventing and eradicating childhood cancer. So I compared it to um, a Subway sandwich, a five dollar foot long. And somebody in chat posted that uh, in their area with tax, a five dollar foot long was five dollars and 42 cents so i rolled with it i was like you guys donate your 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 five dollar foot long subs uh send me your five dollars and 42 cents and i will make you a sub and show it to you on stream of course metaphorically speaking i'd be like well this user they got a 12 inch on wheat with roast beef and provolone with a little bit of mayo uh, you know something like that yeah it was absolutely like i because i remember just walking into the room when this was happening at some point i was just like when did we become made to order food service? Like, when did this video game charity marathon become this? And uh, it was really weird. But overall, the marathon was actually a really huge success. We tried out a lot of new things this marathon. It was our first time we tried out the adventure system, where we um, the, the games in the marathon are unlocked by reaching donation goals. And I had a situation uh, invented that if we didn't raise enough money, and, and this is going to actually be a big revelation, I'm actually saying it here on the show for the first time, if we didn't reach a goal by the time it happened, I had a bad credits, like like the bad ending of, of the marathon. It's like our turn of Gan- return of Ganon version of the credits, and it's really <laughs> terrible and sad. But um, at the very end of it, 
there's a Zelda One continue screen, and we would give people one extra free game um, and lower their donation goals. But we never had to do that because we got to one hundred thousand dollars. We did. People, people did it. See, see, and this, that was that was my big revelation. There was actually going to be a free game in case we didn't actually reach the goal and lower the goals. But we did have to do that. Yeah. Nobody, we didn't have to do that at all, which is great. Uh, I'm really happy, and uh, I hope people don't feel cheated. Oh, I see a really from the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like um, I, I actually got to preview the the bad ending credits about a day or two days before the marathon because I got up here early, and I was actually like, see, I don't want to say I was secretly hoping that we wouldn't get it, but I really kind of wanted to see people's reactions to it. Because it was kind of like a really morbid good. sense. Like, like, it was. It was a very been, good. Like, people would have like been like so like they'd be like, oh man, I, I we're so disappointed because I, I gave a Ganondorf music. It was like all red and terrible. Oh yeah. And, but but at the very end, it's just like it's just like it's just like it's just like continue, <laughs> you know. And yes, I will post the, the fake credits. To yes, YouTube. and it, it, like it, it was one of the it was one of the personal comments that I was getting from people I knew like throughout the marathon. They were like, "I'm really scared that we're not going to get the goal," and I can I didn't want to reveal anything, so I was like, "Guys, don't worry about it. We got it handled. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fine." But It'll I could I couldn't reveal why or anything like that. So it was just kind of like, "Guys, chill out. It's okay. It's okay. We have a contingency plan." Anyways, <laughs> uh, so that was that, that's pretty much what happened at Zelda in a nutshell. It's hard to describe over 150 hours of gameplay absolutely inside 11 minutes minutes here but uh thank you all for watching zelathon we're, we're very appreciative of it thank you for all your nation saint jude uh, and we're gonna be back in just a few minutes with talking about the king of lions and all of the stuff you guys have been talking about inside the chat room thank you again for all of your support we'll be back in just a few minutes but first here's some more music keep it locked to radio hyrule Welcome back to Hyrule Academy, everybody. On this wonderful Friday night, we've been talking about Zeldathon and, of course, the King of Lions. We have an excellent bit of discussion for you here today. You guys have been doing some absolutely insane amount of work in terms of getting everything going for us, in terms to, to, to spark the conversation. I'm here with Scott. Hello, Scott. Hello. We've been listening to some music. and uh, We have. It's excellent. The, the, the first bit of music, I actually I, I passed him the headphones for, and I was like, you have to hear this. And so he, he listened to it. And what was your review of that, what you, the bit you heard? Oh, my gosh. I want to go to there. Yes, that was Battle of the Windfish from Insane in the Rain Music. Insane in the Rain, Rain Music, I, I, I give him shout-outs every show. Because <laughs> he is the most amazing jazz artist, or, uh, cover artist on YouTube that I know of. Uh, and it actually won a really, a really super person as well. Uh, he actually did an entire mo- uh, summer, the one month, uh, or the entire summer of one year, where he raised money for Child's Play charity for every song. And it was uh, he, he raised a couple thousand dollars, I think. So many shouts to him for doing great things, even with his music. Uh, it, of course, it, it kind of relates to our Zelothon discussions as well. Um, and then we heard Ancient Hero from Dark Sword. Uh, which is a very loved remix. It's very it's very popular. It's been on OC Remix and, of course, VG Mix even back in the day. Uh, if anybody remembers that, I, I like to frequent the VG Mix archive uh, on, on a frequent time. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, so let's get right on into the discussion. I hope you guys enjoyed that music. So we have to talk about Ganon and the King of Lions. But first, let's discuss about uh, how, like how and when the the king became the boat. So uh, I'll get your opinions on this. So Captain Treen is going to quote the, the historian saying, of course, that uh, the king doesn't become the boat until after um, Ganondorf has um, gotten loose. Um, I believe that that's how... The, the, the Captain Treen, your, your original message really confused me, and it's still confusing me to this moment. But anyway, <laughs> what the Hyrule story had to say was, um, King Daphnis awoke from his slumber... His, uh, and this is after Ganondorf was resurrected. His spirit took up residence in a small red boat known as the King, or, King or, of Red Lions. So this happened after Ganondorf um, coming out of the, the sacred, uh, the, the, dark, the dark realm, as it were, and, and becoming free. And it uh, also said that the gods chose which of the kingdom's subjects would ascend to the new land when, when uh, the goddesses were about to flood the world. And Captain Trina theorizes maybe the king wasn't chosen to ascend to the new land. Yes, I think that's a, a, a very a very fair assessment. Um, uh, obviously, the king is very tied to high rule, and just by the nature of things, if you create a new a new uh, world above on the water, it's going to be different. So, I think there's definitely some merit to the king being um, soul bound, as it were, to uh, to high rule itself, so that his spirit is sealed away with the kingdom. Yeah, that's a uh, very, very fair assessment, I, I, like, I like to say. Um, the one thing I find really interesting is that the king 
fell into a slumber apparently at some point that um, when, when Ganondorf was resurrected um, it, it wasn't until later that he actually awoke and realized that he was a boat <laughs> <laughs> and that he, he had the spirit had had done that uh, which is really interesting that he was sealed away with Hyrule and he woke up some some unspecified amount of time later as the boat so it wasn't one of my favorite theories uh, that I like I like the prance about this is not one of my serious theories more of a, a, a for the lols type of theory but um, <laughs> my, my theory was that that when the king heard that the gods were about to flood Hyrule he called up the best magicians in the land and uh, they, they had a conference and they all were brought into a small room and they, they, they said, okay, the land is about to flood. What should we make you? A boat. But do not give me a sail. <laughs> that, that, that's, my, that's my personal theory on it. But uh, the whole story kind of is, is it, it's bringing me down, man. <laughs> uh, what we had uh, next, we had the, uh, the Link Skywalker who's talking about something different. The land was about to flood and he wanted to be able to move. So that, that, that's his theory about why he would choose to become a boat. Um and, and the, so, the, so the theory is, well, how can he become this boat? The musical gamer says he is a king and he could have the sacred power of the goddess Hylia because of the first sold in Skyward Sword. What do you think about that, Scott? Um, I think, well, obviously, based on the game, you, you see that the king has like these, these quasi-magical powers. He's like able to teleport around. He's able to take up residence inside the boat. He's able to get outside the boat. And he's able to go back and forth at will, apparently. So I think that's How does a he very... get to the top of Ganon's tower even. I know, right? He like you he just we there. see him. We see him teleporting around. And to me this kind of uh, leads credence to the fact that perhaps the king actually passed away with Hyrule when he uh, when he was drowned. And instead, his spirit was locked away with Hyrule when he perished with the kingdom. But there, okay, so 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 that that brings us back to the comments from everybody else. A slow poke as a gamer says, "Do we even know that Daphne is even alive in the Wind Waker? I mean, I saw, when I saw him warp around, I assumed he was a ghost. But then, as a Stark CA comes with a very excellent comment that really makes it hard, how can ghosts touch the Triforce? In the game, we never actually see him touch the Triforce. We see him extend his hand out to it." But he never actually lays his hand on it. But um, it is said that you are supposed to uh, touch the Triforce. It is very, it's very important to touch the Triforce. Yes, that is true. In fact, actually, I do remember there is there is a scene where it does look like he is in fact touching the Triforce as he makes the wish. So, um, but to me, it, it just seems like uh, it, it, the the theory comes together, and it seems to me that he is in fact a spirit that is tied to the kingdom of Hyrule. Um, when Ganon is awakened, he ascends to the surface in order to find a hero. But 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 how can he wish on the the Triforce then? I don't think that's possible. I think you have to be alive. I think you have to be there to wish upon the Triforce. That's one thing that's very important. Um, Link doesn't necessarily tr- touch the Triforce every time that he wishes for uh, wishes on it. For example, in Skyward Sword, he just he just makes t- uh, says a prayer. But he's he's quite alive. He's not dead. There's the, 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 the I don't think he's dead. I, I just don't think that's possible. Well, perhaps not dead. Like like um, perhaps perhaps he didn't pass away. Perhaps he was just um, soul locked to Hyrule as, as a part of okay, that you're, process. You're getting, you're getting somewhere good because yeah, as a part of that process, perhaps uh, he can change from his physical body into uh, a spirit form, as it were. To, to further challenge the, the idea of him still being alive, um, Lunaris brought up that if he was a ghost, why did they infer he drowns? A, go- a, a ghost cannot drown. But Sora, 107, shout out to Sora who was at Zeldathon. Sora says he wasn't drowning. He could speak while underwater. It's likely mm-hmm. that his business was done and his spirit could move on. I think that's a very, very, very plausible theory. Like, um, one of the things that you see is in, during the cutscene when Link first descends into Hyrule, he's uh, gasping with air bubbles, and then all of a sudden, he can breathe underwater. Um, and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm bringing up the point that in the game you see air bubbles and that signifies that they're underwater and then when Link is okay descending into Hyrule when there's no water there's no air bubbles during the cutscene where the king is um, quote unquote drowning with Hyrule you don't really see any air bubbles coming up from him perhaps he is in fact not drowning but he is simply um, uh, giving into his fate that he is going to be destroyed along with the kingdom Perhaps as being soul bound and soul locked to Hyrule, when Hyrule is destroyed, so is his spirit, and he's able to move on. Okay, you're, you're still thinking he's a spirit, but I, I do not think it's that way at all. I think 
um, he's very much like Ganondorf, that Ganondorf was alive. Ganondorf was, and this is a very important part if you remember from the Forsaken Fortress yes. cutscene. Uh, Ganondorf says that when you drew the sword from its pedestal, how all the monsters awoken. We do not see the King of Lions in his, in his physical human form until after the Mass Sword had actually been pulled. Is it very possible that with unleashing, unleashing Ganondorf's power upon the world, we also unleashed the, the King of Lions' power and he was restored to his, his human form? And perhaps, like uh, I believe it was the musical gamer who mentioned, he, 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 he has like definitely has uh, sacred power in him. He carries the, 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 the blood of the goddess, technically. Yes. Actually, wait. No, does he? No, that would be that would be the only the queen. Um, which, which is a whole other story and a whole <laughs> other discussion for another day. But that being said, I think that the king himself does possess sacred power, and I do think that the teleportation is 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 purely sacred power type of stuff. And at the end of the Wind Waker, when he's drowning, it's not uh, he he you don't see air bubbles or anything like that because he is just. He's just going down the ship, and before before we can see him actually perish, the, the the camera fades away because nobody wants to see somebody drown inside a Zelda game. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Rated or E for any, everyone, or in any game for that matter. Rated E for everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know the way the way I see it, the the King of Red Lions. Like I said, perhaps he's not dead, but perhaps he's just like soul locked to high rules a kingdom. Well, yeah, that, that that that's very true, and, and we're going to talk about this right now since we are running out of time here. Old Nerb says uh, the King of Lions wanted high rule, and Ganon wanted high rule, just for different purposes. The Link Skywalker too says both King of Lions and Gandorf were trapped by the past to start. Psychemy says both King of Lions and Gandorf have selfish reasons to have the Triforce. Absolutely. I think in the game, there's very much a, a, a subtext. It's very subtle. There's a subtext that both the King of Red Lions and Ganondorf are using uh, Tetra slash Zelda and Link for their own purposes, that they are um, using them. Ganon, of course, they, they to get the pieces Hyrule. of the Triforce exactly. so that he can get Hyrule, but the King as well so that he can get Hyrule. I don't think that uh, did the king want the Triforce? Is that like something that it was never really explicitly said? But I think it's something we're supposed to infer because he obviously wishes upon it. Maybe maybe that was his mission all along was to le- yes. le- link up to this final moment in this battle, and he was there. But something happens at the end of the game where the king reliance does not wish for Hyrule to be restored. Mm-hmm. He says, "I want this land to be destroyed. I want Ganondorf to perish with it." He realizes after all this journey that he has to have the courage to stand up to Ganondorf and say. I'm going to wash away everything here, and you two, you're going to go and be the real heroes. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so uh, James RCT actually would, it summarizes this pretty well. In a sense, the King of Red Lions destroyed Hyrule that, like Ganondorf wanted, but instead the citizens lived on up above the, the on the mountaintops to live on for the future. Correct. I think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're running out of time here, so we should probably... Yeah, wrap that up. But yes, very, very good discussions, very good thoughts. Everybody inside the chat, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, next up, we're going to have some awesome mu- music. It's going to be a very short piece of music, but it's going to be something that you guys are definitely going to love. Keep it tuned into Radio Hyrule. And welcome back, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed that song. That was an excellent song brought to you by DSC, who I am absolutely in love with his music. And he's been putting out some new stuff. I actually haven't had a chance to listen to it, thanks to Zelophon. But I'm going to be giving it a, a listen to uh, maybe maybe tonight even. Maybe tonight after the show. That sounds like a fun thing to do. What we listened to there, though, was Hyrule Castle from DSC. Thank you very much, DSC, for contributing that beautiful piece of music. Uh, so I hope you guys have had a fun night. I know I sure have. Uh, Scott, have you had a fun discussion with me tonight? Absolutely. Very good topic, and it's really cool to be in the studio actually having a conversation face-to-face. Well, more or less face-to-face. I'm kind of facing away from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm turning my head every wall. once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my wall of monitors, and I'm just hearing you out of my left ear. It's, 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 it's fun. It's, it's fun. I, it I is. like it. <laughs> it's, it's very good to uh, to be in the studio together. It's very nice. Exactly. So some things we, we came to kind of a, a group conclusion on today. Um, we, we couldn't really uh, take it down. The, is the King of Lions alive or dead? We couldn't quite nail that one down. Is he a spirit? Is he is he actually physical? And, and even even more so, is he um, is his power unlocked? His physical being unlocked by the Master Sword? Or it's a messy territory. What else uh, mm-hmm. did, did we um, 
uh, hear hear about today. Uh, of course, we heard about Zeldathon. Um, I'm already excited for the winter one, um, and we we talked about all of the different things that went on at Zeldathon. Uh, how awesome it is that we raised a hundred and one thousand dollars for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And uh, we, we talked a bit about uh, some of the stuff around that. So that was good. It was a really fun show. I'm really thankful that everybody came out and supported us. Um, and and then, again, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott, for, to, for, for, for coming on in and, and, and joining me tonight. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. And also, shout outs to our beautiful microphones, which we purchased. <laughs> we, 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 we purchased these microphones. They're the same exact model microphone, but we bought them independently of each Without other. Without consulting one another. Exactly. We didn't even think about it. We're like, we're like hmm, I wonder what microphone I should buy. Oh, I recommend this one. No, we both bought them at the same time and that actually happened as a result of the last time i was visiting this was when i was driving back from a wedding that i attended in north dakota i stopped in to cmc for a day on the way back to cut my drive in half because it was only 45 minutes out of my way and we got uh watching some some other lps and we were like you know let's discuss microphones what's a good microphone well, actually this there? microphone was actually recommended to me by eric of, of radio hyrule yeah and i i started doing research that night while i was here and i uh um, um, did a little research at home, and I independently came up with the Shure SM7B, and it's a great microphone. <laughs> it was actually really awesome. So uh, people are asking inside the chat if we're going to hear some more King of Lies discussion. We definitely have more to talk about. Maybe we'll cover that at a later point. There's definitely some topics we've already discussed that we definitely need to retouch on, uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Uh, but for right now, again, thank you, Scott, for, uh, for, to, for, for joining me, and I, and I hope you will join us again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Excellent. So now, guys, I just want to give you guys a final reminder to tune in next week, Friday at 10 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, because we have a wonderful topic, something a little bit more creepy. It's going to be a little bit of a stretch to talk about, and, and I hope you won't die on me, because we're going to be talking about Reed-Eds. Uh, so Reed-Eds is going to be a very fun topic to discuss. Uh, there's a lot of weird things about them that a lot of people don't really realize, and we're going to hopefully expand on that and, and, and come with some great fan theories. I really want to expand on the idea of Reed-Eds. We, we haven't really talked about enemies specifically yet inside the show, so talk about Reed Eds will be a fun time. If you want to support Radio Hyrule and the awesome show that we're, we put on every week, go to RadioHyrule.com slash donate and send in a, a message with your donation to say, we'd love the show, something like that, and it'll help support the station and the shows that we like to produce. If you want to give me some suggestions for music, topics, anything like that, email me at mc at supermcgamer.com. That's mc at supermcgamer.com. And thank you all again one more time for your inputs. And thank you. That we had a wonderful discussion. We'll definitely ho- hopefully come back here and retouch on some of the discussions that we had because a lot of people want to hear more. And, and I, I agree. We need to hear more. We need to hear more. Uh, so thank you again. And to uh, leave off tonight's show, it's going to be Zola's first trip to the village by Josh Welchel. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, uh, but uh, that was very good. But for everybody for everybody who watches Zolathon, I'm going to do one thing to, that you guys may have wanted and you didn't even know. But uh, I think the King of the Lions would like to say goodbye. Thank you all for watching Hyrule Academy. We'll see you guys next week.